Hello and welcome to Government with Dr. Turner. Today we're going to summarize key events and outcomes in the struggle for equality of African Americans. Around 12 million Africans were shipped to the New World as slaves, with about 450,000 ending up in the United States. By the time of the Civil War, the slave population had grown to nearly 4 million. Slavery played a central role in the agricultural economy of the southern states. When the 13th Amendment abolished slavery at the close of the Civil War, it was a tremendous blow to white power in the South. As southern whites sought to maintain control, they replaced slavery with black codes that were designed to keep blacks subservient, even though they were nominally free. The Fourteenth Amendment was passed to combat these black codes and affirm the rights of former slaves as full American citizens. However, these amendments, known as the Reconstruction Amendments, were not effective because federal and southern state governments were reluctant to enforce them. The Ku Klux Klan spread their influence throughout the South and fought a war of violence and intimidation. Their goal was to reestablish white supremacy throughout the region. Even as the 15th Amendment affirmed the right of men to vote, regardless of race, color, or previous condition of servitude, white political leaders set about the legal disenfranchisement of blacks. Southern states enacted poll taxes, grandfather clauses, and literacy tests after Reconstruction to prevent blacks from voting. They also passed laws that called for a complete separation of blacks and whites. Southern laws mandating segregation had the practical effect of creating separate public facilities for blacks and whites. This became known as the era of Jim Crow laws, named for a popular performer of the time whose act mocked and belittled blacks. In the Plessy v. Ferguson case in 1896, the Supreme Court determined that separate but equal public conveniences were constitutionally permissible. Homer Plessy was a mixed-race citizen of New Orleans who volunteered to test the laws calling for segregation. Although he could pass for white, he announced his heritage while traveling in a white train car. His refusal to leave ended in arrest. Ultimately, the Supreme Court put their stamp of approval on separate facilities in the South, saying that separate but equal public conveniences were permitted by the Constitution. This unfortunate ruling by the Supreme Court delayed the fight for black civil rights by a half century or more. Sometimes the court gets it wrong. The NAACP was established in 1909 in response to violence against blacks. It grew to become one of the first effective civil rights organizations in the United States. It campaigned against violence and lynchings and sought to eliminate racial prejudice. As the organization matured, it focused its strategy on winning court battles. Thurgood Marshall and other lawyers for the NAACP challenged the separate but equal precedent created by the Plessy decision by focusing first on cases with limited public importance, like segregated law schools. The struggle for equality in education led to a landmark victory in 1954. The decision in Brown v. Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas overturned Plessy v. Ferguson. Where the Plessy decision had declared separate but equal is permissible, the Brown decision stated that separate can never be equal and ordered states to integrate their schools with all deliberate speed. However, change did not come easily in the South. After the Supreme Court ruled that school desegregation must take place with all deliberate speed, the governor of Arkansas defied the order and deployed soldiers from the National Guard to block the entrance of nine black students into Central High School in 1957. The story of the Little Rock Nine is a story of courage and overcoming obstacles. To understand the fight for civil rights in the 1960s, one has to understand the difference between de jure discrimination and de facto discrimination. De jure discrimination means discrimination by law. It can be eliminated by changing the law. 
De facto discrimination means discrimination in reality or in fact. Eliminating this is much more difficult. In the 1960s, the decade following Brown v. Board of Education, Northern public schools were just as segregated as those in the South due to de facto discrimination. The NAACP had concentrated on court battles to change laws and eliminate de jure discrimination. Changing de facto discrimination called for changing public opinion. To accomplish this, peaceful protests became the new strategy. If protests could change public opinion, that would in turn put pressure on elected officials. The massive March on Washington in 1963 led to the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the Voting Rights Act of 1965, and the 24th Amendment. Many schools across the country did not begin to integrate until they were forced to by court-ordered busing in the 1970s. Even today, many schools remain segregated due to economic factors. Absence of discrimination is not the same as equality. Does the 14th Amendment create an active obligation to integrate? The U.S. policy known as affirmative action began in the 1960s with a series of presidential executive orders. Affirmative action is the policy of favoring members of a disadvantaged group who currently suffer or historically have suffered from discrimination within a culture. The end results are attractive, but the means seem inherently unfair. The affirmative action program was pushed back by the court in the 1980s under Ronald Reagan. The Civil Rights Act of 1991 was an attempt by a Democrat-led Congress to undo conservative court decisions. Affirmative action has been struck down in some states. The public supports the ideal of equality, but resists preferential treatment for minorities. Affirmative action programs are extremely controversial in American politics and culture because of the American commitment to procedural over substantive values. Today, social and economic statistics tend to show that inequality still pervades the American system. Let's review. Southern states reacted to the Reconstruction Amendments with laws that took away blacks' right to vote and segregated the races. The NAACP was formed to fight the violence of the KKK and discrimination that was written into law. Brown v. Board of Education in 1954 reversed the separate but equal ruling from Plessy v. Ferguson. The Brown decision affirmed that separate but equal has no place in the field of education. De jure discrimination was largely eliminated in the 1960s, but de facto discrimination and pervasive inequality still remain today.